Red Alert report for Wednesday, October 26. How to define anti-Semitism? Over the past few years, I have shared with you the IHRA, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, definition of anti-Semitism, and met with and worked with great people and organizations who are working hard to have this definition be adopted by governments, municipalities, institutions, schools, organizations, businesses, everyone. Lengthy, but not overwhelming, you can look at it here. But does it need some clarity or some distilling so that everyone can quickly understand the definition and then go about to apply it usefully and effectively? Well, maybe. I came across a very interesting blog posted to the Facebook group Anti-Semitism on Campus, the University of Free Speech and BDS. I respect the site's administrator, Dr. Andrew Pesson, professor of philosophy at Connecticut College, campus bureau editor for Aldermeyer, who I often cite those articles, and author of several books. This Facebook group is a great resource for information, news, discussions, events regarding campus-related issues. Not all things Israel, but those focused to the academic community. It's a great repository for articles, thoughts, and news on college campuses and even our K-12 school systems. One must request to join the group, and it is well moderated for civil debate and discussion as well as relevance. Dr. Pesson shared to the group this week a blog post from the anonymous author, Elder of Zion. This article is a message to the ADL, who is actively, and rightfully so, um, trying to engage the world community to identify and combat anti-Semitism. And in doing so, it includes the use of the IHRA definition, but it opens the door that perhaps the definition is not complete enough by which to make decisions, policy, or even take actions. Quote, the ADL's webpage on the IHRI definition says, the IHRI definition is one tool, albeit an important one, to use to identify and combat anti-Semitism. However, it is not a substitute for a more nuanced expertise on anti-Semitism, nor does it produce uh, consulting other definitions. The author of this article intrigued me with the notion of adding a bit of clarity, even simplicity, to the definition in order to have something of a tangible weight by which to identify and even judge anti-Semitism, something a bit more focused and applicable than the larger IHRA guide about what anti-Semitism is. The author is careful to explain his proposition of a definition is not to replace or undermine the IHRA, but which has tremendous value, but to go beyond it and offer something that's short or bumper sticker, elevator speech, treatable articulation of it, so that people can rapidly make assessments and apply a judgment. The author explains in the following quote, the Elder of Zion definition of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is hostility toward denigration of, of malicious lies or about or discrimination against Jews. Jews as individuals, as a people, as a religion, as an ethnic group, or as a nation, i.e. Israel. The formatting that he put here is deliberate, although not strictly necessary. It emphasizes that there is a list of actions that are included in the definition of anti-Semitism, as well as a list of potential targets. But the central and immutable point is that Jews are the object of vitriol. The definition has four types of general actions that define anti-Semitism and five terms for the object of these actions. The objects represent the different dimensions of what it means to be a Jew. The author goes on to explain the reason for some of this. His word choices is a comparison to the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition. Hostility towards Jews is, I believe, a better formulation than hate towards Jews. Hate is internal, while hostility is generally noticeable to others. It does little good to make anti-Semitism a thought crime. Anti-Semites usually don't admit that they hate Jews, but they often display hostility towards Jews. Hostility towards Jews includes violence. His other notes include discrimination against Jews is obviously anti-Semitic, just as any discrimination against any people is bigotry. Notably, the IHRI core definition does not actually mention discrimination. I personally encourage you to give this blog article a read. It is not very lengthy. The author also shared a link to his YouTube presentation on the subject. You can find the link in our notes. I found it useful and thought-provoking, but clearly I will continue my work to combat anti-Semitism by identifying it, informing, informing, educating, and activating Christians to do what they can to stand in solidarity with Jews, and that includes my partnerships and activities with organizations such as CAMP, Combat Anti-Semitism Movement, whose mission is to have the IHRA definition adopted and put into proactive use by as many entities as possible. Sharing this article and the graphic with you, examining the thought behind it, it has helped me to learn more about what anti-Semitism is and how it is manifested. With this, we can better identify it, 